Today, we're talking about perception in the industry. Whether you like it or not, how others perceive you will have a big impact on your career in any area of the industry. How we perceive things, whether that be the fundamental truth or not, impacts our reaction to them. In the same way as the tiny curated window of social media warps our perception of how great other people's lives are comparatively to our own, this can be said for perception in the industry. But a warped perception of success in the industry, however, can in fact realize actual success. Am I making sense? Bear with me if not. I believe perception in the industry breaks down into three key areas. Your offering, clout, and how active you are. I've had a few catch-ups over Zoom with various different friends from various different areas of the industry, discussing their experiences and views on this, as well as my own. To kick things off, someone you might recognize from an earlier video, my successful commercial director friend, Tom Brown. One of the pieces of advice I was given really early on was that you need to make your offering very sort of singular. So you need to make it so that people just look at your stuff and go, oh, I understand what you do. Because, you know, there's people who edit and maybe they direct as well. And maybe they're also cinematographers and you look at their work and you're like, well, which of the things that you do happened on this thing? It's almost better, I think, if you do those three things to have three separate websites for those three things. Because if somebody's hiring you as an editor, they want to see the sick editing work you do. If they're hiring you as a cinematographer, they want to look at it and be like, cool, this guy planned the lighting for this, that's amazing. And I think as soon as you start to um, combine those things, you start to create noise. So they're like, okay, I'm looking at this, but like, did they edit it? Or is this their cinematography? Or like, was this the direction? Like, if you think about the people who are hiring you, what they're looking for is a quick fix. I've got this project, okay, and it's gonna shoot like in a week and I need a director. Like, here's the directors that are on my short list that maybe somebody's recommended or I saw their work on Instagram and I liked it. And you could, they go to their website and be like, ah, cool, I can instantly see what this person does and what their work looks like. And that's why on my website, I changed it so that I just took my favorite bits from each of my ads and I gift them. So as soon as you click on my website, it's like walking into an arcade. Great, I can see exactly what this director does in one glance. And then if he's right for this project, I can just immediately put him forward for it. You don't wanna be making it difficult for the people who are gonna hire you. Like they shouldn't be asking themselves, like, what did you do on this? A great bit of advice from Tom there, some that I decided to take on immediately myself. With the exception of this channel, where I will continue to be open and transparent, if you've ever visited my socials or website before, you will now notice that I'm no longer Scott Peters' filmmaker or Scott Peters' director slash cinematographer across them. Even in the instance of some of the work on my website where I've been hired specifically as a director who can also DP, I've neglected to mention that I was too the cinematographer on these particular jobs in the hope of getting across the singular specialist offering and clearing up any noise. And I'm currently in the process of putting together a separate website for my cinematography work for when those opportunities might arise. From Tom Brown to Tom Welsh, one of the people that I've known longest in the industry. Tom is an incredibly talented cinematographer who's shot for brands from Sony to Purcell and even Coca-Cola. When I first met him, he already had a strong online social presence where he branded himself the all-encompassing filmmaker. But more than a few years ago now, Tom took it upon himself to have an online rebrand and declare himself a cinematographer. I was sort of at a place where I just wanted like a bit of a kind of, not a fresh start work-wise, but like to just like move into a different kind of sphere a little bit. So I think the kind of rebrand for me was a big part of doing that. A rebrand with a kind of sole focus on one thing. Let me kind of put my sort of flag in the sand a little bit and made it really obvious to other people about what I was doing. To put myself in a position where I felt more confident in knocking on the door or, you know, asking someone to go for a, for a beer or whatever and be like, hey, this is what I do. Whereas before what I did was like loads of things. That was confusing for some people. Making it easy for people is the one thing that I was never told that I wish somebody would have said. Don't offer too many things. You know, like when you buy a Coke, you're not expecting to get like a calculator company. Do you know what I mean? Like you're like, I want weird brown fizzy drink. Like that's the thing you're going to Coke for and that's the thing you get. And if you have an offering, then you're much, you're just, it just makes everything easier because you're like, oh, I'm the nine by 16 guy or, oh, I'm the guy who does like weird body horror but like in a in a fun way for adverts or like I'm the guy who used to do music videos but now I bring that energy into your commercial. So by defining your offering you're making things easy for people. That's not to say that you can't go and produce self shoot and edit a corporate video if you're advertising yourself as a music video director just keep it on the down low. Now the second area we're going to discuss is clout building. It makes sense uh, to like only show your best self, right? But at the same time, I don't know, I've always felt a bit sneaky about it. I did a corporate job two months ago. 
no one's ever going to know or see that. I feel like I'm like doing it undercover, like because because if people know mm. that it's like Scott does corporate jobs, then it's like oh I oh I thought you were a serious commercial director or oh I thought you were whatever. Like I didn't realize you did that. So I feel like there's a snobbery around some things. As you said, it's all about perception. So you know, like a lot of directing, um, modern directing is to do with clout. It's like being on Love Island. If you're flavor of the month or you worked with a big artist or you got the big commercial, then for a short period of time, like you've got a load of like, it's like pulling a Hot Wheels car back. You've got a little bit of momentum. And what, what you have to do is use that momentum. And by using that momentum, you have to make it look like this is what you do. So obviously they always say you're only as good as your last piece of work, but- The last piece of work was <laughs> Right, yeah, exactly. If your last piece of work was like, oh, I went to Azerbaijan to shoot uh, corporate videos for B, for like BP, you know, like it's di very difficult, isn't it? There's lots of jobs that I do that I like, and I think that they're good pieces of work, but they're not exactly what I want to get hired for. And I think the stuff on your promo reels or your website has to be the stuff you want to get hired for. You don't want to put something on your website that you're like, this is good. I think I effectively finish this piece of work and I'm pleased with the like the outcome you want to put the pieces of work on your website that people are going to be like that's wicked because you get hired by people who are obsessed with clout like creative directors and creatives are obsessed with like what's cool now they read it's nice that and boom and all the design blogs and I think if your work looks like the stuff that's kind of in vogue right now then of course you're going to be a much more appetizing prospect than somebody who's like, yeah, I'm really good at doing handheld corporate stuff. Even if you'd be the absolute perfect person for their McDonald's ad, they're not going to hire you. They're going to hire somebody who just did a sick music video because that makes more sense, you know? Another director friend of mine who operates largely in the music video world is the ever enthusiastic Ash Riley. Someone else who, as long as I've known him, has made a big effort to be active on social in promotion of his work. We catfish our Instagrams as much as we don't want to say it or believe it. I don't want to show that I shoot clubs because then people are going to think, oh look, how can he, Ash Riley or Scott Peters, be shooting clubs when he should be shooting music videos. So when it comes to music videos, then I'll put up like the ones you'll feel like, yeah, we went in with and this, I'm happy with this. If somebody sees this, it's gonna basically benefit me more in the future, kind of vibe. In a way, it's not catfish, right? You're not pretending to show something that you're not. You're just choosing not to show the ugly side, which is basically what social media is all about. I think it basically all boils down to first impressions, right? So if someone comes to your off with the reminder, <laughs> um, if someone comes to your website or to your Instagram or whatever your sort of your window, your shop window is, and they see all this stuff, and like maybe like these first two videos or images or whatever are like amazing, but then there's like one here that's a bit. Of shit. They're gonna be like, well, is that what I'm gonna get? Even though I'm well aware of this whole perception thing, the trick of it or the lack of still definitely works on me. On a large job for a telephone communications company that I was directing at the end of last year that on this particular occasion I can't discuss, due to the scale of the project, I needed a second unit on board. Headed up ideally by a cinematographer with directing experience who could oversee a small team on another location simultaneously. Someone who I was gonna really need to trust. Before I'd even had time to give it any thought, the producer on the job recommended me someone. The producer had put forward someone else as a suggestion, just, just like, you know, I'm sure you got someone in mind, but I just wanted to suggest this person because I think they're really great and their work's very similar to yours and it would work, whatever. And I looked at his site and I looked at his stuff and like he's got some really good stuff, but like there's also some real like bad stuff there. And as like, it would have been so simple for him to just like get rid of that bad stuff, but because I saw it and I'm well aware yeah. of like, I, you know, I've got sh thousands of videos that are hidden on my Vimeo that I'm ashamed of now, but I wouldn't have been at the time. It's your shot window. So you kind of like perception is so important because if people see that bad stuff, that's what they're going to take away as their, as their impression. And it's not just down to your actual work. It can be how people perceive how you make that work when you're posting those oh so necessary behind the scenes snaps to your socials. I had a rep actually hit me up from a big label. They sent me like um, songs, you know how it is. They send you, you start pitching, ATC, blah, blah, make treatment and all, all that stuff, yeah. Everything was amazing. Then, but this person, the way they were speaking to me, like, yeah, 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 you're going to get it. That's like, you, you know what I mean? It kind of makes you feel like, raw, like, you know what? This is now my chance, my one chance to actually go up, you know what I mean? And, and go against all these other directors in the industry. 
But then one comment which actually caught me and actually really upset me, I'm not going to lie. It really did, yeah. It really did. I shot a music video that she saw on my Instagram, but because I tagged, I used the Sony A7S, she went and turned around and said, the reason you did not get the job is because you use a Sony camera. So I was a bit confused, right? I was like, hold on. So you're saying I couldn't get such and such budget because you saw something that I showed my Instagram and because it was a music video of a Sony. And she goes, yeah, because you use Sony. You use a Sony, like a little box. Maybe you're not um, confident enough to use bigger cameras. You've always been very, very big. Like, it's not about the gear. It's about the person that's using the gear. What the- yeah, but it's, it's, it's tricky because the inherently just share stuff where it's like bigger gear i'm barely ever posting anything where i'm like shooting on my lumix i'm doing that like half the time you know what i mean but yeah you're trying to appeal to people that are like the next level up whether that's directors or producers or commissioners or agents you know you want to appeal to the gatekeepers of the sort of work that you want to be doing If you want to just shoot low-budget, self-shooter type jobs at your local church, then I shouldn't think there's much harm in posting pretty much what you want from your on-location work. But if you want those larger jobs, the one with the bigger budgets and the gloss, then show glimpses into a window that demonstrate that you can handle that sort of stuff. Perhaps you haven't been lucky enough to land those sorts of opportunities yet. Well, in which case, it's probably time to get to work on that all-important passion project. Make some personal financial sacrifices to do the sort of work you want to do, even if it's not income-making work. On a few occasions, I'd been lucky enough to land some of the budgets that allowed my cinematographers to be working with the big boy cameras and lenses as early as 2015. But as a cinematographer myself, I hadn't actually ever touched an Arri Alexa until this job I did for Adidas in 2017. When production said the budget wasn't there and we'd have to shoot on my Sony A7S II, I promised them I could sweet talk the rental house into a discount as well as taking a small hit on my fees in order to make room for it. Now, this obviously isn't best practice for longevity in your career, Definitely don't be doing this all the time. But if opportunities aren't falling at your feet, then see what you can do to create them for yourself. Sometimes people are just posting to give the perception that they're busy. I went through a real stage of trying to be very vocal on it on a regular basis. So like, you know, if I'm shooting twice a week, then I'm posting, you know, an on-set shot or whatever. Now I'm very much like, I'm so busy. That's the last thing that's on my mind. And I always forget to take the picture it's a job within itself i normally go through stints of doing it i did a really good stint for about seven months a few years back and i was getting jobs because people obviously i'm reminding people that i'm there and i'd be like dude you're crushing it at the moment oh wow it's like i'm always this busy i'm just not telling the whole world that i'm this busy all the time yeah yeah i don't know i find the whole thing really i don't like it but i realize how necessary it is This extract from my favourite educational podcast to run to, The Wandering DP, hosted by Patrick O'Sullivan, with cinematographer Peter Moseyman, makes at least me feel better that even someone several runs of the ladder above me in the commercial working world consistently goes through the same sort of emotions of self-doubt and worry that I do. It's a very common thing. The FOMO, the notion that everybody else thinks you're doing great shit and you're thinking, dude, I'm not doing anything. I can make it look like I'm doing a lot. But really, maybe I did, you know, a commercial a couple of weeks ago or something fun, you know, a couple of weeks before that. And you just spread it out, spread out that social content because the busier you look for some reason, everybody thinks you're smashing it. And full honesty here, I do it just as much as anybody else. <laughs> Um, is that because you think it works or is that because you know it works or is that because that, oh, that's man. what everyone else is doing? I'm going to go ahead and go with all of the above D because... I have gotten work from Instagram. I know just about all of my colleagues have gotten work off of Instagram. I mean, dude, some of my longest standing friendships now with people in the industry are people I've met off of Instagram. Behind the perception, everyone is scrambling. I know there are definitely a few exceptions, but in the scheme of things, they're probably the top 1%. And I don't believe that even they don't worry. In my situation, I've got people emailing me and DMing me on Instagram asking advice on getting work and how to get where I am. And although I have managed to get a lot of work over the past decade and have been lucky enough to be incredibly busy over the last 18 months, out of the past 33 days, I've only been paid to work for five of them. I've been sending out emails to regulars and unknowns, updating them on my work, reminding them that I'm here, but nothing yet. Not unusual for January, but I am still quietly sweating. Coca-Cola, people are like, why the f*** Coca-Cola advertise? Everyone knows who Coke is. It's like, yeah, but they're just reminding me that they're there. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, which I think I have gotten to grips with a lot more the last like couple of years. Is it's a more of a yeah, just reminding someone you're there because actually it's not really about you know putting out the like most beautiful photos you've ever taken on your stories anymore. Like that kind of era of Instagram has kind of gone in my eyes. It's more of about appearing, being busy. I'm going to use this quiet period as an opportunity to take a proper break and go on holiday for a week or so. But I'm really, really hoping that by the time I get back, a few jobs have landed in my inbox. Because if they haven't, then I'll be kicking myself for having spent money going on holiday. And I'll start to think that I'm never going to work again. It's a sometimes exhausting, never-ending cycle in my experience in this freelance filmmaker life. And when I do land that next job, which I will, I'll be sure to take the opportunity to work on my perception game. Success breeds success, right? If people feel like, my God, this guy's working with this guy and this guy, and also you can stagger it, you know, so you don't have to get a perfect picture on every set, but you do need to think about it because you're not just working. Every time you get a job, that's a chance to make an advert for yourself. Thanks for watching. If you found any of this helpful, then be a hero and give it a like below. If you enjoyed hearing from industry professionals other than myself, then you should definitely check out this video here on the topic of working for free in the industry. And if you still have not yet subscribed, then I don't think I need to tell you what to do. See you next time for more semi-helpful tips and interesting insider industry knowledge.